Hello everybody, welcome back to Yenes Cake Tips. Thanks for joining me again. Previously, I have done a few cake fondant coating videos showcasing my Yenes sliced fondant pattern method. What a mouthful name, isn't it? They were very popular and even some of those videos picked up by very well-known YouTube channels, other YouTube channels, and taken, with our permission of course, shortened and republished again. So they become viral in no time and watched by more than 10 million people. Can you imagine? Uh, I couldn't believe it. So I'm very grateful for that because more people are watching our videos, more sharing is happening and of course we get more subscribers. I have also received through that some special requests. One of them was uh, they're asking me to make another video with the same method but this time using butterfly pattern. So my wife asking actually the same thing for some time. So today I'm going to do that for you of course and for my wife. My aim is creating three color gradients on the cake surface representing flower field as a first layer of fondant coating. As you see on this picture, the color gradient starts from yellow, turning the green a little bit, and after that end up with the sky blue. So we're not talking about anything else than the first coat of fondant. First thing come to my mind, of course, I was going to use airbrush. I was just about preparing airbrush tool and putting on the table, get ready for the course. And with my research, I came across with another method. It found about 25 years ago, maybe a little more, uh, by a polymer clay artist, Judith Skinner from United States, known as uh, her name, Skinner Blend. And I will take this method as an inspiration and using with fondant with great respect, admires and credit to her. Then we continue the tutorial with the second layer, which is I'm going to do the butterflies with the slice fondant method. But to see that, you have to wait for a while. Uh, I'm going to explain everything during the tutorial. And we have also, you see that flowers and other butterflies on the cake. For these two items, I'm going to use wafer paper, which I prepared before. So my wife actually printed for me. And uh, you may not have that kind of facility, but I will leave this one is up to you. You can use uh, pastillage, uh, rolled and cut butterfly shapes, and then airbrush or also one brush painted exactly as it is what we did with the what we're going to do with the uh, slice fondant and flowers. Also, you can also use some cutters and make some daisies with sugar. That will not going to be really emphasizing in this tutorial. So, uh, what do you see on this table here? What we need to prepare to start with this class. Okay, I have my. Uh, cake over here, which is not a cake. It is a sort of like a, a dummy cake. It's not even foam cake. This is a kind of PVC pipe about 16 centimeter by 20 centimeter high and also coat the top part with the upside down with the chocolate and then coat with the white fondant. So that is nice, very nice geometrical shape so we can execute that the, the method what we're going to do. If you want to use a real cake, of course you have to mask it very, very nicely like this. It's completely 90 degrees straight. Otherwise, your, your covering is not going to be match the, the way that how we're going to do. I have a cellophane sheets over here, a couple of them. It is taller. It is taller than the cake. And also, when I put around the cake, it will be longer than a bit of circum, circumference. So that will be comfortably, we can lift up and go around the cake. I have this uh, little aluminum angle, which is about uh, three by three centimeters. And uh, that will help me to create a corner. So when you when you look at here, when you look at here, we will have that part. So that will be 90 degrees here. So that I'm going to create that that part with this. All right. You will see that anyway. So there's no need to talk too much about that. I have my chopping board to cut my fondant slicing, and then that height of the chopping board will give me a comfortability. I can cut continuously without touching the tabletop. And this is also another piece of blade, uh, which is about 10 centimeter, I believe it will help me to cut straight lines in a square piece. A couple of flower wire that will help me to put uh, butterflies on top of the cake. And uh, this is not going to be a real cake. That's why I'm not worried about uh, uh, protecting cake with wires because otherwise I would have put a piece of uh, a straw inside here before I poke anything inside the cake. So that's why it's not really important at the moment. I have a brush, very, very sharp tip because I'm going to create those antennas by just brushing on the surface of the fondant. So uh, fondant leveler, a sharp object, which is, I will use only this corner. Uh, 
to create those, those uh, turnings. But I can also use just the back of the knife, the same thing, it's not very important, just to understanding as a kind of like long, uh, hard uh, sort of object that you can push into the fondant. All right, small little roller pin, a marker pen to mark the cellophane to see the size of the rolling. And then a PVC pipe to roll. I have my towel, a scissor, a drop of black uh, gel color that will help me to create those black lines. Oil spray, water spray, and then also the number of fondants. Uh, you need to use uh, a fondant which doesn't dry so quickly, like the Vision. So I'm going to use the yellow and blue for the, the surface, for the first layer. Between these two will blend green automatically, which I will show you that Skinner method. So orange, red for the center part here, and then black and white, of course the blue uh, for the butterfly. And then, uh, of course, my poking pins to remove air bolus if there's exist, and some, some starch. So, uh, basically, what we'll have here, we will have a couple of different uh, sort of like stage to go. First, to cover the cake, and then after that, we do the long piece to cut the slice uh, fondant for butterflies. I'm going to start to produce those, those sticks, those sausages, let's say, and uh, let it on the side for a while. While I'm coating the cake, it will rest for a while, the cutting will be much more easier. So let's start to do that sticks for butterfly. As I always said in previous videos, uh, you have to find the, the pattern that you can uh, produce your stick to slice. All right. So uh, when I look at my reference pictures here, that is the uh, wing, that actually one piece. But there is upper part and there's lower part. So the upper part, lower part is almost the same. So this part is a bit more longish here. This is more smaller and a bit more roundish here. So if I produce same kind of uh, long piece, which is representing that, so I can just bend a little bit more or roll a little bit longer to make it small, I can produce that kind of thing by adding two, uh, two parts from the same kind of uh, work, all right? So I like to identify one segment here, which I can start and multiply. So that is the segment I'm looking for, this part. Not that one, not this black part. So I like to produce this one and make some changes. This red part, I like to push it all the way here to this area and then produce this. So that will be like this, all right? So that will be blue inside and that will be small part of orange and bit of red inside here. As you see that everything is joining here, that will be, when you look at from, from uh, just a picture of this and that, you will not even realize the location of the red or orange. Doesn't matter. So, and after that, I'm going to coat this with white outside, which is this, this one. See that here is more, here is less, but I'm going to make it everything with more white here. All right. That is the first step. I don't want to say more, and you will see the next step after that. So I'm going to start now knitting my blue, and white to produce that blue part. And also some orange and red. When I look at over here, there's a darker blue, lighter blue, and lighter blue again inside. So I'm gonna create that by just rolling this fondant, a long piece, overlapping certain areas, like not, not on top of each other, just a bit like this, partially overlapping together to create that, all right? So, the white is here. Gonna roll slightly larger, like this. Okay. That's the first one. I prefer not to use much starch or something because we want that every single layer sticks each other. So do not use anything if you don't really necessarily need it. Using a knife underneath, just scrape it out. All right, let's put this on the side. And then also do this one. Very small piece of orange.
do the same thing. This one also here. All right, now, as I explained, I'm going to overlap it. So try to make sure that everything is about the same size. So this is a bit larger, so I'm going to roll this one a little bit more. All right. Okay, now this one here. We want to have a blue outside, so that's why I'm going to put a white one inside. Okay. Just like this. Okay. And then this one also. Uh, red has to come uh, inside, so it has to be red first. And orange after. I have to just make it like similar shape. Otherwise we will have some cuts without some cuts with. Okay. Just do that. All right. We have to sometime end bit we have to cut to make it nice. All right, like that. All right. Now, this one has to come to that size. So I'm just going to roll a little bit longer. Just like this. And it comes here. Now, are we doing right? Yes. This one like that. This one cut about here. Open up a little bit. Sometimes we can also use a little bit of sort of mist of water just to make a good connection. All right, what we have seen over here, that's my first sort of like a stick that will be rolled to the right size. Okay. All those things you can put back into the belongs to. All right, now, what else? So, I like to roll this one, it's about this size, but I want to have a white skin around, right? So that's why there's no point to now roll that size and then make another roll, a uh, white one in that size. So I'm just gonna put the small pieces on top. When I'm rolling, the white will be get thinner and thinner, all right? Just about this much should be enough. Let's put a bit of oil here. Let's see. This is just right. So I'm just going to have this one here, stick it here, and rolling, and registering here as a mark, and cutting after that. Okay, that's it. So this is done. All right, I can see that nice and Nice and sticking together. That's the one. All right. There's always end bits which is not going to be uh, giving what you're looking for, so that is not important. All right. That is pretty. So again. Cut this, cut this. 
You can always mix all those things into black color. So I have always off-cut fondants, I gather into one box. When it's, when it's enough inside, I just add black color inside because when you mix all together, it becomes like a gray, sort of like a blackish tone because all the color mixture is actually black if it's like all deep colors. So I add a bit more powder black color, it becomes a black fondant. All right, now what we're doing here, uh, I have this stick here. I'm gonna push in the center this one down. When I do that, I will have a shape like this. I will have a, this is a tabletop. I will have a shape like this, right? I don't want that. I want to have a shape like this, straight and straight. So that's why I'm going to start with this one. Right? And continue with this one. Make sure you're in the center. You see that what's happening? Okay. I need a little bit of starch. Okay, we're almost there. As you see that the red mark coming out, that means we cut in the right place. We're pushing in the right place. All right, well, let's cut this one from the center, like that, and remove it again, okay? Now, so far so good. What I like to do, I'm going to give a little bit more, a bit more the size, just pushing like that. I want to have a little bit more longer. Okay, so that's here, and that's here, and I'm going to cut one more time. One here, one there. All right, now watch this. A little bit of mist of water to glow, glowing business, correct? This is here, this is there, and this is there. So that is already, uh, you see, joining in this part. Make sure that they are all joined in the right spot, like everyone is going. You see that you can already see it like this thing happening, right? All right, so joining is correct. So I'm gonna turn this one slightly roundish, just by squishing like that, okay? Slightly roundish, all right? Again, drop this off. See that? Coming up, okay? Now, there's a black line around here. There's actually a dark blue, but I'm gonna make it black. All right, I'm gonna roll the black before I coating, show you. So, black is rolled. Always cut off first without marking around too much. All right, just cut this. And then we're gonna start the black joining here. So I'm gonna give a little bit of mist. All right, just start from here. Like the same spot. And give some registration line over here, there's no problem. Just uh, cut over here and join it. That's it. So we have that particular piece. Is it ready? Not yet. Okay, put this over here. Now, we have so far done this part. And then also we need to have that white spots over here. This is very easy. So I'll take a piece of the white, maybe this much. Yep. All those things I'm estimating, all right? So you have to really 
uh, know how much is it. I can't give you exactly the gram. Make a small piece. Approximately the same amount. Maybe a little more. Put this one here. This is good, but not enough, so I'm going to do more. This is probably two, just roll it a bit longer. Okay, let's see. There's one, there's two. I'm going to do a little bit of water here. This one has a as a one piece to the, towards the end, okay, like this here, one piece over here. I'm going to do two more. So there's black here. First of all, clean the table. Okay, so cut in the middle, cut in here. That's it. So one here and one there. So I'm pushing together so it becomes like this all right you think we need one more i think i like to do one more small and get back to you just one more small here now is the time so i have one two three four five over here i have one two three four here one two three four five six so five is just right all right so now is the time to roll this round shape like round shape as long as what we need to do all right now, it is important to, to make this size, uh, make it a good position. So, if we, what we do normally do, we just cut slice and after pushing and making things are larger. So, I don't want to have, I don't want to have uh, too small and I don't want also too big. So, what will happen, we will have two different size of butterfly on that surface. So, we will have two upper and then lower part of the wings. So, I'm going to use from one side, uh, the big one, one side. That's, so the largest piece over here will be the big one, all right? So I'm just gonna roll as much as I need, all right, here. I'm thinking about this is already pretty good. So I'm gonna cut this first, all right? Probably about this size is more than enough, all right? This size is more than enough. See, that's what's happening. It's already, you can see that the, the difference, all right? So the lower part will be a little bit smaller, of course. This one will be smaller. Don't go anywhere. So what we can do, I'm just gonna cut this one this much, this much, because what will happen is uh, the, the large butterfly will have smaller size of this, but the same size will be the larger size of the smaller butterfly. So that's why I'm going to do this one slightly smaller. Make sure that you follow that straight line. You don't, you don't twisting like this, it has to be straight. Okay. That's the lower part of it. All right. And then uh, I would like to do it. I like to do it this way like that. So this will be the one butterfly. That will be the second butterfly. So I'm going to make this one slightly smaller, all right? This is easier to do this way, all right? So there's no air bubbles inside, which is good. So this is smaller than that, all right? Which is good. Make sure that is all the same direction. That's it. So that is the large butterfly. That's the small butterfly. All right. So now, identifying the beginning part. So we're going to pinch this one like this. Make sure that you end up in the same spot on the other side. I'm turning actually that corner is 90 degrees. So I'm going to do my best. Push this one like that. All right. After that, 
pushing here. So that is 90 degrees. If I push this one like this side here, and then turning to like a the triangular here, I'm doing the right thing. So that is correct. That is correct. It's not correct. It be turn like this. All right. Okay. This is one part of the butterfly. Okay, like that. So what we see over here is longer. All right. So that's why that's why I need this. So I'm gonna get this one nicely equally done, and after that I'm gonna push slightly larger piece here. See what I mean? So I just did that that extension, and I make this one a little bit sharper at the end. It's all about concentrating on that uh, segment and then try to make that piece approximately the same look. All right. After that, this one there's some uh, roundish parts here. I'm going to push this one like a one, two, three, four. Okay. So that is actually the upper part. All right. I put this on the side. Now the other one exactly same again. A pinching here, 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 and uh, I don't need actually this one here because I'm not going to use 90 degrees. I'm just going to use this. Okay. This is probably good, like that. So that will be look like this. It's already getting there. So now we're going to do the same thing again here for a smaller butterfly. Pinching and pinching here. So the beginning part and then continue the straight line. You will not do a mistake over here because this is right, this is right. Okay, and here push again into the 90 degrees triangle. and push it back. So as I said, you can use also a knife, but I find this one very comfortable, so that's, I'm gonna use this one. So this one here already, like that, slightly sharp here. Okay, then make it four times roundish parts. This is done. And this one also, Starting point, pinching, this also pinching, All right, do this, that's already done, I love it, All right. so this is already done, this is already done. So if I have, uh, now I have to cut this, it will be quite uh, sort of like a, a soft and will be a little bit sticky to that, to that uh, craft knife. So I'm going to put this on the side. I maybe just wrap it a bit of cling wrap. If you don't wrap it, it will be still okay. So I'm going to start with the, uh, the Skinner method to blend the colors for the first coat of fonda. As you have seen before, I have to do some calculations and I know how much I have to roll the fonda. I don't have to waste my time to make it over. All right. So first of all, the height of the cake. So this here is about, as I said, 20. So 20 means this much. So something from here till here, all right? And then the width of the cake, the circumference of the cake is about 51. Yeah. So that is 51 here, this much. As I said, that that uh, uh, cellophane sheet is a little bit taller and a little bit wider than the circumference. So well, what we have to do, we have to come from here, is about this size and this size. That is the complete area what we need to cover the cake. But we have to roll the fondant slightly smaller, is about maybe about this size, this size, and after that extend it to the actual size. That will be much more uh, better and smoother. All right. So because I want to roll final rolling in between two plastic sheets. 
right? So uh, I'm guessing that this is already too much, so I have to cut this a bit less, this much, should be okay. So that is already maybe a little more. So by the way, I have to turn this upside down so we don't have to touch that uh, marking pen anymore, okay? Just to make it this size. Approximately should be all right, okay? So let's do it. So all my aim is I want to create that that graduation about yellow and green in the center and blue here. We need two colors because once we overlap the blue and yellow, we will get automatically the green, all right? So let's start. Okay, put this on the side. Uh, by the way, these are all already uh, ready to go, uh, ready to cut. All the ugly parts on the side, we're not gonna use it. We're gonna cut from the center and then it is already can rest for a while here. All right, let's go. So I'm doing something over here, like inspired from Judith Skinner. I think I still believe this is too much. Let's do it a little bit smaller. All right, good. We have to roll this and maintain a kind of geometrical shape. Now, watch this. Before we carry on with this, all those overlapping everything, I want to get this one a little bit more straight. All right, just cut with my blade, just like this. I don't want to remove that part after the blending because it will be separate, too much wasting. Just put this one here like that and then cut exactly the same size. Okay. And so these are not wasted, comes together. And after that, what we do, we just cut from one corner to another corner together, all right? And separate. Bring this one here, like this. Actually, this is more sticky underneath, so I'm just gonna do it like this. Right. And this one also, like that. And put it over here. So, as you see, that is already kind of one side blue and one side is yellow. So all what we have to do now, we're going to roll and fold, roll and fold. But the trick is you have to always fold in the same direction. So if I just, you see that when you look at here, if you have a like center line here, so what you see over here, that blue here is about, is about, see that is one times, this is one, two, three times. So this is, this is, uh, this is 75%, this is only 25%. Same thing over here. When I do that, like this, and like this, so we have one, two, three, 75%, only 25%. So that means when I keep on rolling and folding, we will have a lot more blue this side, a lot more yellow this side. So that is the trick, all right? That's still what the uh, Judy Skinner find out, all right? So that is already nice, and we start rolling, all right? That will take some time, all right? I think I have to roll at least about 10, 15 times. Depends of how is the blending carry on. So I'm going to not ready before my blending is really, really seamless, all right? So this line has to be disappeared. So what are we doing? Rolling, rolling, rolling. After that, folding, okay? So then after that, Continue rolling, exactly in the same direction, but maintain that shape because as you remember, we will have this one like this, all right? Like this, all right? So that's why you don't have to roll it so very big, all right? Okay, 
keep it keep it nice and together. Right. One more folding. Keep rolling. I'll tell you what, let me just do a couple of times and I'll let you know before I finish how many times I'm folding and rolling. All right. So I've done it already about 12 times. As you see that blending is coming up beautifully and you can still see some blue sort of like a part over here. We have to carry on around probably about 15 times, another, another maybe four or five times more to get rid of these lines. But actually, I like those sort of like natural lines in between. So I'm just going to do one more time, then I will be happy with this one now. So time to time also, you can cut off the some parts here to make it a bit more geometrical. All right. So this one here, cut this one. All right. We're going to roll again anyway inside that, that piece. Right. Now, I'm going to fold this one again. One more time like this. One more time like that. And like that. So, that is already there. And after that, I roll again. This will be end up a little bit thinner than what I what I wanted to have, but it doesn't matter. So we just have to live with that. It's already good enough coverage. So I will actually give you exact measurement how much you need fondant to do that properly. All right. So I'm just carry on with this. All right. A little bit of oil. Okay. I'm going to place this one here. This is almost there, you see. I wanted to make actually this size and extend it, but it doesn't matter. So that, that's actually good enough, like that. Okay, push this one a little bit like this. A little bit like this. Okay, so what we have to do now, extend it this to the right size. Then we will be done. So next piece. A little bit of oil again. This one here. Okay, now continue the way how I always do. Look at it. So I just want to centralize it so I can stretch it from the same amount from both sides. Okay. That's it. A little bit more, we are there. Okay, this is already, as long as it's bigger than what we needed, we are already done. Stretch a little bit more, a little bit more here. That's it. So, I'm not going to do anything else this, at this stage. I'm going to leave this one on the side because this is already protected with the, with the cellophane sheet. We can do a lot more things without worry about the time. So, um, my next thing is, I'm going to cover the top of this cake with the blue. So when it's the blue here has to continue on the top, I'm just going to use this blue and cover this top part only. Now, let's put the top on first. A bit of water here. And then, press this one on.
that's nice. And just use the plate and cut this off. With the real cake, you can do the same thing. A little bit more attention in it, but you can do exactly the same thing. Okay, so this is done. Put this on the side. Let's glue this on the cake first. Okay, let me just tell you something. You have seen me doing complete pattern, complete pattern, uh, like roses I did, like uh, poppies I did. Everything in one piece, I make it ready and put it on, already finished, all right? Another occasion I did uh, uh, daisies, I, I put the flat color first on the table and then placed the daisies on top, arranged it like this, on the second layer, but glue together and lift up and put it around. So this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue this whole thing first. I'm going to arrange the butterfly on that pattern, on that area, individually, and then I will have better control to, to push it down and make it exactly the right place. And after that, I lift up, I put all the butterflies all in one around of it. So that will you will see in the next, but I want to glue this one first. So in order to do that, first of all, we choose which part is better. So this is better or this one better. So this is not bad, all right? This is not bad. So what I like to do, I'm going to take this up this part up first, okay, that's nice, then I'm going to cut, I don't, I want to use uh, more blue, so I'm just going to cut this one off from here, exactly straight line, okay, okay. and then after that, with a while, Place this one back again, but when I'm placing back, I'm going to put it exact on the edge, here. So this one exactly on the edge. So when I lift up, I will lift up, and when I approach the cake side, I will not have an extension over here. All right. So, then, Take all the air bubbles out, as much as we can, okay, it's already out. After that, turn upside down, remove that part. We will need that pattern later and again for the butterflies. Right. And after that, I like to have a little bit of moisture here. Uh, I can put over here, but I can also put over here, no problem at all. This time, water, not oil. Okay. And lift up. It will stay, it's not going to fall off. Right. Touch down. And go around carefully. So once I reach on the side here, so what I like to do, I'm going to remove this one up and this one open, open, stick this one without pushing much, okay, take it out, okay, and cut one straight line. And remove this. Open up and remove the other one too. This one too. Okay. And after that, put it back again. So they will, they will match exactly to the edge. All right. Now, just smoothen up. This one like this. Pretty good. So just I can remove now already. 
Right. Work it out a little bit more. There's a bit of air bubble here. Just have to push it up. Okay. Glue the top part also nicely. Okay. That. After we put the butterflies, you won't see that line anymore much, obviously. Okay, just like this. I think this, this, the gradients is quite matching over here. Now, um, another thing is I've already cut this part. I don't have to push it in. Just one little part here, but too much. And this part was not high enough, so I just push it down to the corner. That's it. And after that, what I do, I take a scissor, carefully remove that. I rest the scissor on the top surface over here, and then carefully cutting. Okay? I'm not pushing down the scissor, I'm just resting on the surface, on the top. Once I cut as good as possible, I can still use my Use my palm to make it right. Work it out slowly. That's it. That or the first coating is finished. Now we're going to do the butterfly. So, as I said, just use your palm to make it a bit more joined together. The joint becomes sort of seamless. All right, just work it out a little bit. This, this part inside your hand is just nice cushiony. It polishes and glues together all those joints together nicely. All right. Sometimes this, sometimes the hand. All right. But don't push too much. Don't push so much that the corner is already popping out. All right, and after that, you have to always check the air bubbles. There's one here. There's one here. Where else? To see air bubbles, you have to look at sort of one direction. The light comes from here. You can see the shadows. So that is already done. So far, so good. I may just wait for a while. If there's any other air bubble up here, so I just took it out. So next thing, what we're going to do, we're going to use the same same area here, uh, clean up a little bit, same area here, and organize all our butterflies over here in this area. So organize everything, and after that, we're going to be going to sort of like a, put the next sheet on top and push it down and work it out nicely. And then when we lift up, we lift up all the butterflies together, putting around, and it will be done without any problem. So that's what we're going to see next. So all the sticks that would be prepared already rested enough so it becomes a little bit more firmer as you see that I can handle it, I can take it in the hand as long as the skin doesn't get too dry when we uh, pressurizing making the size larger doesn't get some cracks on the corner. So I don't think anything necessary over here to put some oil or something because I think I feel that it is quite nice. So the, of course the best side is in the center. So that's why I'm going to cut in the center. I'm going to go left and right, sort of like cutting from the center towards the end bit. That will be the best result. All right. So uh, I'm just cut one uh, slice first. Uh, you see that this this board is a little bit higher. So when I'm pushing like this, I can touch in one shot the blade all the way down. So that's why it is better to cut things things on the chopping board. So. Look at this, how clean is that? That's our butterfly upper upper wing. So uh, I decided to make it like a little bit more thinner than as usual I do. It's about, let's say about three millimeters. All right. It's beautiful. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four large one. So that's why I need to have, I need to have eight uh, upper wings at this stage. Six, 
7 and 8. So towards the end, it's still nice, but I may just lose a bit of like a shape at the end. So that's why I cut from the center out. All right. So let's start doing it. You can always move a little bit, shape a little bit better. All right. Here we go. So the critical thing also, in the center, leave some space because we don't want this one touched together. And now when I when I pressurizing, it goes all like in the center bigger. So I want to have a little bit distance. When I pressure, it just meet in the center nicely. All right. So that is the one. All right. You can always move around, no problem at all. Like that. And, and this one. So that's a, a beginning. So we're going to do now the second part, which is this one. That's good. So then we're going to start from the smaller butterfly. Let's make about one, two, three, and four or so. You can always change the location, no problem at all, okay? Once everything is finished, we're going to see, all right? So uh, I'm actually doing a mistake here because I'm looking at the smaller frame. We have to go out because that's the, that's the frame that what we have to look for. Look not bad. All right, now what we have to do we have to get some oil and place the second plastic on top. Right. And slowly work it out. Push it. Push it. Push it. So just stabilize the positioning. All right. All right. They are nice now. I like to work it out like this. I'm not going to worry about too much to make the shape larger. Just make sure that you're rolling individually and then staying in the kind of in control. All right. Come back again. So it's not bad. The only thing that I like to do, I like to separate this one a little bit. You can always remove that top uh, cellophane sheet again, and then give some manipulations, like more around. This one separate a little bit more, and this one here. Okay, this one also. Okay, let's work it out one more time. I think I'm pretty happy with this. Let's see which side is better. So that is this side. All right. And then when we turn the other way around like this, 
let's see like that. I think this side is better. I don't know. I think this side is better for me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the side, right, like that. Because we're going to use the other side, so I have to remove this side. You know, what do we have to do? A bit confusing now. So I'm going to get this one on the surface. So that means, that means I have to get this plastic sheet, all right, at the at this uh, line, so at this area, all right, at this area. So just do that, all right. Put a bit of uh, oil here, all right. And then I want to get in this line at the lower part of the plastic in the sort of position that I, when I lift up, when I touch down, and the butterflies goes in the right height. So we're talking about like 20 centimeters is the height of the cake. Okay, that means let's say this one is a measurement. Okay, there will be there will be here. Uh, that is in the middle. That's correct. All right, that's correct. So what I like to do now, I'm going to change upside down here. See the beauty is I can handle everything together. It's already organized. There's nothing to worry. Remove this plastic. All right that cellophane sheet. I don't know how correct is this if we call this plastic. So then after that, we want to have this one sticks on that one. All right. So as you see that this is already moving a little bit, I can still, I can still manipulate a little bit to reposition, separate them a little bit because we're going to put the bodies in the middle. All right. That's it. All right. Now I'm going to spray a little bit of water. because we want to have the butterflies sticks on the surface of the cake. Okay, this ready. We've got this one here. Now is what we have to be very careful. All right. Good. Lift up. Touch down. And stick. This one I like to separate already. And then get this one here. Stick also this one. All right. Now touch a little bit so the butterfly is nice and stabilized on the surface. No problem. And then remove that cellophane sheet. So far, so good. What happened here? There's a bit of separation here. So instead of like uh, moving, moving things left and right, what I like to do, I'm going to put one more small butterfly here and one small butterfly here. So all what I have to do, I'm just going to make individual butterflies in between small uh, cellophane sheets, just a very small one, and then stick them on the right place and I get back to you when it's finished. So I already placed one and I like to put one more here. Uh, just a small one. This time I've only cut a little bit thinner because I don't want to make it too large. All right, like that. And this one goes a bit of oil here. Okay, here, like that, like that. And then this one, the small one. Two. Okay. Oh, let's take over here. That should be good. This side is better. Turn it on like this. First of all, make sure that whatever you're going to lift up has to be enough oil to hold the butterfly. So that is enough oil to hold. Okay. And the other side, remove and a bit of water. All right. Then bring it here. 
easier. I think this way is good, like that. Then remove. Perfect. All right. Now I like to continue from the top butterflies. I'm going to do a couple of them myself and I'm going to show you before I finish completely, you will see what's going on. So as you see, there's a bit of further development here, but you don't have to worry about it because I left enough behind to make you understand uh, and I'm going to do it all again. So first thing, I'm using uh, a wire. So that means the, the flower wire. And I have to make the end bit and using a plier a little bit bend it, just like this. Just about like a 45 degrees, all right? That is all ready. Then I use a little bit of pastillage. Uh, fondant will do it, but you need to wait for a long time. So that's why I want to use pastillage. It's easier to manage, all right? Just give it good knead, like that. Then small piece, like this. And then one side sharp, like that, one side sharp. Another side you can just use the scissor and then just like a, create the head. Just make a marking but don't cutting, not cutting. And after that you take the wire and you poke from the sort of back, go all the way front. You can actually enter to the head part, all right, nicely and also push a little bit down so that the whole body doesn't move back and forward or like left and right, okay? So that is already ready to uh, poke in the every uh, left and right side of the wings, all right? So this is already here. Uh, I'll need to get a little bit dry, just a couple of minutes to dry. So I have it already ready here. So what I do is um, I have already pre-cut uh, wings. So where is wings coming from? As I explained it before, I have this printed by my wife, uh, both sides exactly the same location, all right? So if you don't have the, uh, this uh, wafer uh, paper, uh, what's it called, it's like wafer sheets, uh, you have to use probably very thin little pastillage and also paint it with brush. So, and then I use scissor and cut this very nicely, slowly, and leaving a slightly sharp edge over here, on this edge over here, and then just remove that. Because both sides exactly the same location printed, so when I'm cutting, I will have the completely independent uh, wings. So, as I said, just when you come to that point, you just cut a little bit like this. You have this part to enter the body, right? So, um, now, what are we having? There's the body here, okay? And you may also uh, use a little bit of like uh, weight here to cut slits that makes it easier to enter in there, right? So you get a little bit dry already now. Just gonna put one more time. That's it. Right. And then gently poke those wings, both sides like this. It's, it's very light, that's why it can hold very, very easily. All right. That's it. It's already strong enough. Just poke a little bit more. I think this is too, too, uh, too long, so I'm just going to use the other one. That's it. All right, so I like to put this one around this area. Uh, I need to cut a little bit shorter, this much, already enough. Okay, if this is of course the yolk cake, it will have no problem just to poke it in. So just go over here and then place it like that. It's already hold beautifully. And also uh, in this area, I don't want to use any kind of flower or ribbon or something because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't go into the reality. There's no ribbon in the air like this. So I will still use uh, the, a butterfly here. I always cover that entrance point if there's something out into the cake because it's not really uh, elegant here. So I have to cover with something. Of course, I'm going to use just a butterfly to do this. Um, again, I have one body over here. And then 
just put one slit here, one slit there. After that, this one goes here, and this one goes here. So easy. Because that uh, wafer paper is so, so thin, and then uh, also like stiff enough to poke inside that piece of pasta dish. You can also use gum paste probably, but you have to wait for a while to let it dry for a while, okay? That's it. So this one goes here. Kind of, you can, you can glue it with chocolate or you can just place it over here. A little bit of, maybe a bit of egg white or something will hold it. Or a little bit of royal icing, even that will do. All right, now, the top piece you understand, that's what I do. And then the side here, uh, there will be some uh, flowers here. Let's, let's, let's do this one now. So uh, whatever you cut from this uh, wafer paper, you have always some off cuts on the side over there, or you can get to just a complete fresh sheet. And this is a paper stamp, paper cutting stamp. So this is a kind of like cutting and stamping at the same time, all right? So uh, you put this wafer paper, it's so thin in between here, all right? Uh, you can buy from online this one, every kind of shape, and then push it down. You have a perfect cut. So look at this, a perfect cut. So after that, what I do, uh, because the wafer is a bit flexible, so I just push in the middle like this, and then give a bit of like a curve like that. So I have those things ready already. I'm going to finish this one, this part now for you. So uh, I'll take a little bit of realizing, and then touch behind here, a little dot, and placing those uh, daisies somewhere. It's not really important, not on just sort of side by side, up and down, left and right, so you have to create sort of like irregular, uh, irregular kind of shape here, all right? So uh, let's go and then do that quickly. A little bit of, well, I think, put it there. Especially I want to do like a little bit on the couple of pieces on here and some here, maybe one or two there. Just like this, so that it becomes like a more like a field, opens up. And one here. So now look at it, it's already good. And I have also here yellow royal icing, but I mix it uh, with water. So it becomes sloppy because when I want to have the centers yellow, I want that realizing rounding itself, all right? But not sort of like flowing away and then not so, so like getting sort of nose. So that's why it's important how much water you put in. You have to just try it. So when I pipe a bit here, it just runs a little bit down and make it become round and then let it stay, you know? Okay. Just like here, 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 there, and there. So that's already good. Let's finish the, the, this part. You see, I put a body in the middle uh, from this, uh, uh, for this butterfly and also put antennas, right? Uh, okay, that's what I do. I have a brush, very, very sharp. At the beginning, I already told you, very, very sharp. So like very thin lines you can do with that. I don't think you can do with the edible pen because it's not dark enough. So just dip in here and then just go very carefully, starting quite a long one. Like this. Like that. And also here. That's it. And this time I'm gonna use fondant black fondant, very small piece, like that, very sharp, like this, sharp, always elegant, like this, okay, and then put a dot of realizing here, 
you can also use chocolate of course and place that body here and also put one here and one more dot just around here and around there All right, just take a pin, touch here, and place it there. Touch here, and place it there. Instead of fiddling with the fingers, you have to use the uh, needle to grab that little ball and place it in the right, right spot. All right, so far so good. There's nothing else to put on. So let's give a name to this cake. Uh, let's say flying butterfly over the daisy field. It's finished now. So uh, I really enjoyed it because I didn't do this one before. It was first time I was designing that. Uh, every time there's a new request, so I have to work it out how to do it. But basically that if I follow the uh, certain principles, I can always come up with something just to find a particular uh, part of that, that uh, uh, pattern and then cr produce that uh, stick and after that slice it and then just it's just uh, uh, quite simple to do if you just follow the basic rules. So uh, more and more also I realized that this kind of method is uh, gives you unlimited kind of possibilities. Actually you can better say limited with your imagination. You just have to imagine something and then find out that particular pattern and then Create that long piece and after that slice it and do whatever you want with that. So that is all for today guys from me. Thank you so much for your time and choosing our channel to be inspired online. So as I always said, please like, share and subscribe and don't forget to press that bell so you can get our notifications. God bless all of you. Until to my next video, bye for now.